Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure Team Meeting. We are the 1st of August 2023. So today, round the table, we have myself, Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemeur, Mark Waite, Bruno Varten, Kevin Martins, and Stefan Merle. The six of us are there, so I hope everyone is doing good. And let's get started. So the weekly 2.417 is out, at least the package. And the Docker image will be published soon. I've created the tag. And the Docker image soon. I just okay. had a health, attack, a health attack before because when I published the tag, I didn't saw the the updated version on Jenkins.io. I believe it's the Netlify, uh, the uh, Fastly cache, unless I missed something, but there might be something to be careful about. No, Jenkins.io hasn't, the changelog hasn't been merged yet. We're a little bit behind there. Oh, and, okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah. The, the thing is, I took that the page, uh, there is a fast, a fastly uh, uncache during the packaging step in the release process that should update the version here on the download page. I, 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 if there's no change log entry, so if you, uh, well, at least my experience has been unless there's a page regeneration event like a commit that arrives on this site, oh, okay. we don't get new content that they can update. Okay, that explains. Okay, um, so it's out and we are waiting um, for the change log as usual. Change log as usual. Right. Is there anything else on that release? No, okay. Uh, announcement, we had a security release last week. It was announced uh, Tuesday. So we already discussed that last during the meeting. Uh, we had a combination of um, uh, core release, core security releases for both LTS and weekly last week. Uh, just a reminder, so that's why we had to Cancel last week uh, weekly release because it was part of that security release. Uh, next week we have the weekly meeting, but in two weeks, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that will be the 15th of August, which is not a working day in France and some European countries. So my proposal is that we cancel the 15th of August meeting. Is that okay for everyone? Yes. No objection? Yes. No objection. I'll be out of the office, not for Assumption Day, but I'm out of the office. The, the, the French people here cannot object because they won't be walking, right. of course. <laughs> uh, weekly meeting cancelled 15th August. But I assume we will still have, have a weekly release as usual. Is that correct? Still, uh... yes, yes, but that means Kevin will have to deal with merging the uh, merging the the change log and adapting it because I won't be available. Just in you. case, Kevin, I will be around because I will mm -hmm. be. Uh, I'm not expected to work for my day to day SRE job, but I will have a task to run on the internet. I will have my machine, so I will be around if you have an issue or need any help that day. You can absolutely uh, ask for help if uh, anything is wrong or if you have questions for that day. No, okay. no worries on this one. I, I will be in front of the computer. That's why. Sounds good, Damien. Thanks. I appreciate it. And I think I should be okay at uh, merging and everything like that. But yeah, I'll keep that in mind for sure. But hopefully you enjoy your time. Cool. Thanks. At least uh, I will need to be there for creating the tag on the Docker uh, release unless someone is able to automate that until then but no emergency. That's all for announcement for me. Do you have something else on announcement, folks? Nope, okay. Let's have a look at the upcoming calendar. So the version 2.418 uh, uh, Jenkins next week. 
we will be the 8th of August. I already forgot the next LTS, as usual. <laughs> Let me search the format. You don't need to search. 2.414.1, uh, releasing 23rd of August. So release candidate 9th of August. I see. August. I, I, I didn't. Release hear the... is 23 of August. 23 of August. Did I did I catch correctly the version number? You did exactly 2.414.1. Cool. Thanks, Mark. Something else about upcoming release? No, there there are security backport. The security backports are already done. Okay. Uh, and and there are still some, there was just a regression reported today in the UI that I'm not sure if there, a backport will be done or not, but certainly we're watching actively for any surprises or bugs that might justify um, backports. Cool. Thanks, Mark, for the detail. Uh, no plan security release and no next major event as far as I can tell. Anything else on the calendar for you folks? Cool. Okay, so let's jump on the topics about the tasks that we were able to finish. Uh, I haven't had time to uh, sort or classify the items, but uh, let me know that uh, first we had a bunch of issues where contributor failed to log in to Artifactory or to manually release their plugin. And they received an, a 401 HTTP error, meaning no authentication is either not provided or wrong. And the symptoms are the same for everyone, including our Mark Waite here. Um, when you log in to account Jenkins.io or LDAP or Jira or any services, it works. So it's not you, you're not crazy. You didn't misconfer your Maven settings. <clears throat> uh, it's because there is an issue that we, we still don't know the root cause, most probably a change in the Artifactory configuration that we are not aware of. But uh, Artifactory tries to compare the password, the LDAP password you are passing as credential to a local password, which is either empty or a generated random value. We don't know why this happens. So we are working, there has been a new issue. Uh, we had a lot of these issues. Uh, uh, right now, we have a boost factor in order to solve that problem, you need an Artifactory administrator. So Daniel Beck and I are administrator, for sure. So I'm the boost factor here mainly, given the low availability of Daniel. Um, the trick is uh, there is a setting on the user that has to be set to disable internal password, which forced Artifactory to request password check on the LDAP. That was the, that was the default behavior. Um, so I've opened an issue to track that. We have to contact GFrog to ask them, why did it suddenly happen? Did they have a recommendation? Uh, right now, I'm fitting to changing when a user open an issue. So if you have that issue, please open on the LDesk. Um, I've started to, to search how to batch update the users, but the problem is any new user created have the uh, setting disabled. So the batch won't fix on long-term. Any new contributor joining Artifactory will have the same problem sooner or later. So we need to ask GFrog for a solution. Maybe that's a feature request, so we can define the default behavior. Maybe they have to roll back something, I, I don't know. But right now it's annoying and we will have to treat the user one by one. So sorry for the inconvenience. If you have an emergency issue, please open an help desk issue. Is there any question, suggestion, clarification, objection on that topic? No, okay. So thanks for the person who triaged the, <laughs> the issues. Uh, next issue, plugin not found on plugin site. So we had a contributor who created a, 
a plugin and they were really eager to see that published on plugins Jenkins IO, which happened after two or three hours. The reason is when you publish a new plugin, you have to wait for the build to kick. The build runs every three or four hours as far as I can tell. So their plugin has been is now visible thanks to the manual build uh, trigger by Alex. Thanks, Alex. Uh, no more issue on that topic. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't uh, immediately done by the previous build because there has been a 502 error during the plugin generation. We have to diagnose that part. Uh, an issue has been opened by Alex on that topic, so thanks for that. So the user problem has been solved. That's why the issue is closed. And we will have to work on the HTTP error. A long running issue, artifact caching proxy is unreliable. Um, so thanks Basil and Derby for completing that task. So now the acceptance test harness is using the ACP caching system. And we haven't seen any regression due to that uh, system. So thanks for that work. That confirm that the network changes we did are not suffering the overlap issue because we haven't seen any TCP connection error on Azure since at least a few weeks. Any questions so far? Objection, clarification? Nope. Okay, so let's continue. Stefan, can you give us a heads up on the not toleration and pain for IRM? Uh, CPU node pool on Azure. Yes, we did create a new node pool with the uh, tainted node selector uh, enabled to uh, make sure that no non IRM pods were scheduled on that node pool. Uh, it went smoothly and we checked uh, that everything is working fine with Javadoc that uh, uh, we moved from the old IRM64 node pool to the new one with the taint and it worked nicely. Um, we also had to um, deal with Datadog and Falco to make sure that that pool uh, got uh, those uh, two uh, daemon set. And, uh, and we just had to, to use the, the taint, the toleration, to add the toleration for the pods to be able to spawn on that. It's working fine. And I just added uh, and, and move migrate the um, uh, reports.jenkins.io from uh, Intel to that not pool ARM64, um, as it was also an Nginx uh, uh, pod. So it was. Okay. That, that, that one is another issue, so no worries. I'm not uh, sure there's an issue. There is another issue for migrating workloads. These are two okay. separate topics. So thanks for the work. Uh, two additions. So as Stefan said, we had to update the daemon sets that we deploy, Datadog and Falco. So we have agents of these services running on the new machines, even uh, despite the toler the taint supply to the new not pool. Uh, nice thing is that all the Azure internal components, you see the kube proxy here, but there is a bunch of Azure services used to mount persistent volumes. All of these systems were already uh, working despite the taint. So it looks like they really did their their homework properly and their managed service are really working as expected. That's really nice on AKS. Please note that's not the case on Amazon. So that's why I'm I mean how in the with the user experience in Azure, I'm really happy with AKS so far. And the last one, the funny one, is that Datadog has a second component named Cluster Agents, which is an highly available service that we run on each uh, cluster. And that one has been running one of its replicas inside IRM while the other replica was on Intel for months, <laughs> which, which wasn't a problem that showed that everything was working properly. But as an additional proof that Stefan did his homework properly with the taints, now that component is fully working on Intel as expected. So thanks for the work, uh, Stefan. Thanks for the reporting on that issue. Uh, next issue, Jenkins server enabled to download plugin from the updates Jenkins IO website. So I guess that was a user uh, level network issue. 
Uh, yes. Okay. So that person was facing issue uh, for uh, accessing one of the download mirror they were redirected to. So thanks, Mark, for completing the issue. There wasn't anything on our own, the, but at least we had to check that the mirror wasn't down, which is not the case. And our redirector wasn't down either, which is not the case. We haven't heard back from the user, but there is nothing else we can do. They have to contact uh, the Aachen University, which was the mirror, because either the network is uh, denying requests to, uh, to that server or the university denied requests from that network. So thanks for reporting. Sorry about the inconvenience. Uh, you have to contact them or change mirror. Next, uh, we had ATH build failing due to denied outbound requests during tests. So that one was an old issue. I forgot to close uh, two weeks ago. So I closed it. Um, we are allowing external re requests to the internet from the Jenkins CI agents only for outbound HTTP, HTTPS and now HKP protocol, which is used to retrieve public GPG key, uh, which is done by a lot of the Docker files inside the ATH, hence the request from team. Uh, we finished the reporting on the last miles of the Kubernetes 1.25 update. Uh, so the issue 1.26 for Kubernetes update has been created. I need to do a last path, but most of the changes we did on the two past Kubernetes upgrade have been reported to the task list for the upcoming 1.26. Uh, the deadline for 1.26 will be October. So we have a bit of time. Ideally, if we could target end of August or September, that would be better. Any questions so far? Clarification, objection? Okay, I'm continuing. Uh, we had free account issues. So person unable to have their account. Uh, some of these requests were due to either um, we have two main issues on account Jenkins IO today. If I uh, if I ex if I exclude the people who try their Jenkins account <laughs> inside our platform, um, first we have the person who have an old account they didn't use, which was a part of the security problem with the LDAP in 2021, and this account as a uh, as part of the security response had their email disabled and set to the username. So when they try to reset their password, they cannot. It requires a manual intervention. For these users, reminder, don't blindly change the email immediately. Check that the user isn't a plugin maintainer or did not already work with Jira. Most of the time, they already commented on Jira. So you can confirm that the email is the proper one. Uh, yes, Mark? So just for, for precision, when we had that account outage, we did not alter anyone's email address. Uh, what what the problem was, they they had set it themselves to that flawed address. And when we attempted to do the notification, they could not be notified because we had no email address for them. So we actually did not reset anyone's email address as far as I know when we when we were dealing with that incident in 2021. Okay, so that might have been a two, uh, 2020 incident then. One of the LDAP security incidents, before I was able to act on that area, Olivier did a batch on the LDAP to remove this email. Oh, huh, okay. I did. So I didn't remember that, but all right. That, so because, so I, uh, I have the date wrong. You're correct. That's not the 2021. All of these accounts haven't been used since 2019 or 18 in that case. So that's why. Okay. But thanks. Uh, good point, Mark. Um, and so for everyone, the takeaway is when you see such an account without a valid email, double check the account on Jira. Because right. this user, most of the time connected to Jira a few years ago, and Jira keep a proxy user with the proper email. Or you can also use Artifactory or all, uh, let's say, all GitHub issues, you can find the user. But don't sure. blindly use the email asked by the user to avoid any unwanted takeover. 
Well, and thanks for your point on Jira as a cached copy. I had forgotten about that. That's a really good place to check. If if they don't have an accurate email address or they don't have a useful email address on accounts.jenkins.io, but they do on Jira, like you said, we can go to that one and use it and trust that that was their address at one point in the past. Mm -hmm. Good. Thanks. And the other kind of issues are uh, users that are trying to create an account uh, from a public IP, uh, egress public IP, which is in our deny list. So they are classified as spam, and we can see these errors inside our Datadog monitor. So in these cases, I tend to create the accounts manually. I don't know if uh, yeah, user really are really doing what they expect, but yeah, that doesn't kill. Any question, objection, clarification? Oh, okay, cool. Um, I closed a non-planned request from a user who reported an invalid certificate for, that's the generic domain name we use as the main entry point for the public IPv4 uh, on our public cluster. All of the services are consumed with a domain name, such as getjenkins.io, which is most of the time is a C name to that subdomain name. There is no reason for asking for a certificate because there is no reason for accessing that domain name. So I've asked the user never answered. One of the most probable reasons is that this user might be running inside an organization with, um, let's say some kind of appliance of security appliances that tend to not respect the HTTP host protocol headers. Most of the time they, for instance, they are case sensitive while they shouldn't as per as the RFC, which when they have the CNAME redirection breaks the HTTP redirections most of the time. Or worse, it's their DNS that doesn't follow RFC. In any case, there is nothing we can do and we shouldn't publish any service behind that domain name. So since we didn't have a use case, because there might be a use case that will require that in the future, I'm not an absolute person, but right now without any problem statement, I, I decided to close it as a um, not planned and no action required from us. If there is an objection or if I forgot something, don't hesitate, we can reopen with a problem statement, and we might work on this. Is there any question, need for clarification on this one? No? OK, so let's continue with the work in progress issues. Hervé, can you give us a status on the migration of the update center, updates Jenkins IO, to another cloud than AWS as it is today? So we discussed it together and we came to the conclusion we, we should uh, use uh, the mirror bit chart. Um, so we get an Apache 2 server and the uh, mirror system already include. We want to use an Apache 2 uh, server and not an Nginx, for example, because um, the update center is generating a lot of HTA access uh, configuration file we have to keep. So uh, the goal here is to mount these uh, HTA access into the Apache 2 services and uh, add redirection, HTTP redirection to the bucket on Cloudflare. We might have to put a domain name uh, with Cloudflare to be able to use it uh, for enabling public token buckets, but it remains to be, we have to, to check that. Okay. Be used for redirecting to Cloudflare hosted er two buckets. So reminder, that means each time a Jenkins server will, re will request the update center JSON, like today on updates Jenkins.io slash whatever, 
depending on the URL you are hitting, you might have a first redirection to the JSON file itself. And with that new architecture, once the request goes directly to request the JSON file, as survey stated, you will be redirected to an, a Cloudflare public bucket that will be on another domain name, but still HTTPS valid, that will take care of handling the egress download. We will start with one or two buckets, which of course won't be stored inside our infrastructure, so we don't have to pay for the outbound bandwidth and we benefit from Cloudflare infrastructure. The second reason of that additional redirection is that then we will be able to set up additional mirrors, Cloudflare or something else, in areas where the network require proximity, such as in behind the great firewall of China. Cloudflare, for instance, allows us to create additional buckets that could be on the China network. That one will be a great help for our remote users. Is there any other question on that topic? Or is that everything is clear and we can continue proceeding on that? No, okay, let's continue then. Thanks, Hervé, for the report. Stefan, your turn. <laughs> Applications. Oh, you, you were right. There is an issue. Um, yes, that's that's uh, all the, um, the services that may uh, take advantage of running on an IRM64 in order to, to save some cash. And uh, I did this morning, uh, this afternoon, sorry, uh, migrate uh, reports.jenkins.io and it went well. Yes. But still, cool. I have a few so to look now... in and to check. Yep. Cool. Um, I believe uh, Wiki uh, will be the next candidate. Oh, I'm no, not no, no. sure. I will have to check that. So we have just a note. We have two kinds of services. The one that, like Javadoc and reports, that already consume an, a third party Docker image, such as the official Nginx image for these two. Mm -hmm. This image on the Docker already provide IRM64 declination. So for this one, it's easy. We can just change the toleration pain selector and that works out of the box. For images such as Wiki, we build these images ourselves. So that means we will need to update our Docker image build process to support multi-architecture if we want them to work on IRM64. Yes. I, I mentioned Wiki, Stefan, because I was thinking about Nginx because it's built on top of the official Nginx image. So it mean? may be kind of easy to have also then IRM. Yes, I, I remember exactly. that. So that's the idea. So thanks, Stefan. So you will need You're to welcome. find the other services that we don't, that are using images. Uh, we know Datadog cluster agent, for instance. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, I don't, have anything else to add on that topic? Is there any clarification no. question on this one? Okay. So let's continue with Jenkins CI failing for Jenkins plugins. So the contributor answered after our request. So it looks like in their case, um, the plugin repository they are using is an unexpected one because it's not an original repository. It's forked from the company's organization initially. They forked their repository to the Jenkins organization. That pattern looks like to be of consequences inside CI and Jenkins IO in the way we configure CI Jenkins IO job scanning. When the contributor, Sumo Anema, despite being an administrator of that fork inside Jenkins CI, when he creates a pull request, I forgot the pull request, which is not from a fork of him, then is not considered as a maintainer. So any change to the Jenkins file is not taken in account in the pull request build. That's a security concern 
that's a security mechanism on built-in in Jenkins CI, but here we are on the edge case. We might have to update the job configuration to cover this case, but it's not an easy one to solve. So at least they were able to have um, to use the method provided by team. When you have such case, the contributor of the plugin should open the pull request from their own fork, not from the either the original external repository, neither from a branch on the Jenkins CI plugin repository. That might be a bug on the GitHub organization scanning plugin, but may, that also could and most probably is a misconfiguration on CI Jenkins CI. Changing that configuration is not uh, uneventful because it will trigger a reload and the scanning of all plugins would take two hours and most probably hit the API rate limit with the consequence of blocking all of the builds. So if you do this, please don't do it during a, a bomb build or ATH build. So the user described their problem. So we will need to find a solution or tell them to not use it and then update the documentation for developers uh, if we cannot have an easy solution. Uh, Bruno and, uh, and Kevin, we will let you know the outcome of that issue in the future. So I'm mentioning this to you because you have it under your radar. No expectation from you or any, anyone on the documentation team right now. Uh, but next week, we should see more clearly the next steps for this one. Is there any question, objection, clarification for this one? If we cannot find the proper configuration on CI Jenkins IO, and if not a bug on the share scanning plugin, then we'll have to document this for developers. Next issue, plugin site build commonly fail on infra CI when accessing plugin Jenkins IO. So I haven't had time to look on this one that has been opened by Alex. We have to, to check the build logs and see what caused the error. Um, um, so check the, the login Jenkins because it keeps only five builds. And... Okay. Uh, yeah. Is the build uh, kept? No. Because uh, when we see that kind of... Um... When I oh, no. checked before, okay. it was already discarded. Okay. So uh, can you add a note on the issue to tell Alex if he see another error like this one, if he can uh, keep the build so we it won't be deleted by the build uh, cleaner? Yeah. Um, I'm not totally sure where to look in terms of access logs to find these errors because plugin Jenkins CI is inside Fastly. Uh, so I'm not sure if they have access log for that. And I'm not sure if it's using Fastly because it's a JSON file. I'm not sure if it's static file cached by Fastly or if it does, it, does directly it's the plugins.origin.jenkins.io uh, backend service inside our cluster. If it's inside our cluster, we will be able to uh, to check the access log at the ingress level. If it's in Fastly, I don't know. So we have to work on this. Um, it's when yeah. building. It's when building on this one instance that the uh, requests are done. It's Yarn who is calling when you were building the yeah. plugin inside the infra. Or CI, it's calling. Yarn is calling. Uh, a, the, there is a there is a JS file uh, called a uh, JS script called by Jan when building which uh, requests a plugin site from one instance. Okay, I'm not sure to see the why it would have an influence. You were, I, I, I thought you were saying that if the request come, came from our cluster or, or instance, we might have more visibility on them. That's why I ah, Okay. Saying. Yeah, it, no, it's more uh, the server side, otherwise, uh, 
if we if there has been an http 502 issued it's a server side error so we should have an access log somewhere with an error message to point why did it fail to answer the request and that if the error would have been a four or something that would have been client side and in that case yarn would have been the cause but that's not the case and the error appears intermittently so is it fastly issue is it on house i don't know but we mm. need more logs in order to diagnose this one i try to run a build uh, with plugin dot origin that jenkins that io but it failed because uh, uh, plugin that origin that io is ip restricted yes uh, why do you want to use plugins origin jenkins for that? it was a, a test it was a test okay uh, okay uh, that we uh, in any case we could use plugin that origin that uh, jenkins that io because it's no. not a big bandwidth it's just from our build but yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. you want to to use what the end users see and you don't want to create specificities like this one especially when using a cd and in front of your website um yeah so uh, because if we have a json file serves served on origin and it's a generated file then in that case that means we can have it somewhere else and consume it directly instead of having to use it through the website if you have to do that kind of uh, bypass. Um, yeah. Do you think we could create a Datadog monitor to alert us when that build fails since InfraCI has Datadog plugin installed and set up and is streaming its data to Datadog? Mm -hmm. Because at least we will be alerted and that will, uh, that will at least allow us to go and manually kick the build so an user won't be waiting too much for their plugins. What do you think? Like the Accountab alert I've put in place, uh, we can easily target a pattern in a specific uh, service logs. OK, I'm not sure if it's a log that we want here. It's more build we status. We can detect it in the log when the pattern is matching the log of the plugin site, uh, the build of the plugin site, we can then create an alert from that. Okay, makes sense. But to be quite honest, I would prefer a more generic monitor that say, hey, the build failed. Because the main branch of that one should always be successful. If it fails, that should be a, a call for action from the SRB team. But yes, eventually having a second monitor with the log pattern would help for that specific uh, help desk issue. Any question, clarification? Okay, so next topic, ATH builds are become a responsive. So that's, um, we changed one week ago, the kind of instances uh, used by the ATH builds inside saying CI Jenkins IO. We switch from spot to non-spot instances, which, which are way more expensive. But the benefit here is that that should fix most of the instabilities, especially when the dreadful message, uh, I don't remember, but yeah, could not connect to a name of the agent. That message most of the time is because the agent was reclaimed by the spot instance. Everyone I did discovered and so and we reported how to check if a machine was evicted due to spot reclaim, which is a reason for the build the job being unstable. Um, what we saw is that there are there is a retry. It's retried two times for each uh, steps. But most of the time, the probability of spot eviction of the second virtual spawn agent is really high. So I've asked if we see better stability, but I haven't checked myself. We should check the history of the builds and also the cost increase per week to see the impact because most probably we will have to keep the ATH agents using non-spot, but in that case, we will have to uh, either change the instance type to have the proper instance. Do we need the instance with that size? Do we need something with a different cost? We need to do the reanalysis. So I propose that we start with metrics and based on the metric, we take a decision on the upcoming week that we will report on the issue. 
most probably we will have to keep the non spot issue, the non spot uh, instance. Is there someone who wants to work on this one? And is there a need for clarification as well? Okay, I will take the take it then. Um, we have to measure success build success rate success rate without spot and cost impact because right now as far as I remember the the cost was ten time cheaper using spot so. Right, I would be inclined to say let's retry four or five times until it works, but not sure if it will change the global build stability. It will increase most probably the build time when you are in a spot, spot eviction time window, but at least the build will continue until it works. Maybe we will have to wait uh, a bit more time. Next issue, assess artifactory bandwidth reduction option. So uh, there will be tomorrow, we have to announce officially, but the, the time window has been fixed by Mark and High because we'll be bus available. So tomorrow, Wednesday, Wednesday uh, 2nd of August at 2.30 PM UTC, there will be a brownout of more or less one hour on Artifactory, where we will disable and remove any virtual repository pointing to the Maven repo one artifacts. The consequence of that for us will be that the Maven builds inside CNG and Kinsayo, inside a, a, G, a GitHub action for the CD process and for uh, any contributor will fall back when not finding an artifact directly on the Maven central repository. The benefit of that operation is that we will be able to test if we can build most of our biggest projects without having to mirror these artifacts. The brownout is a one hour session and then we will roll back and we will conclude if we saw um, catastrophic failures of it, or if it worked as expected. GFrog last week during our meeting validated that principle because that, that should allow us to gain at least 10 to 12 terabytes of data, not consumed by that instance. So that will help a lot. And GFrog concluded that if it does work and if we can persist that setting, they will be okay for us with our bandwidth consumption after that change. That means no need to go further unless they require that. But right now they were quite happy with that change. And as I, they told us, if that is implemented and allow and take its promise, then that should be okay. That doesn't mean we don't have to track the other mirrored repository because most of these mirrored repository have the artifact stored sooner or later on the central repository, such as Jigit, for instance. But at least, this one is far, far away from the other. So the brownout, that will be the first edition, and then we'll make conclusion. Most probably that brownout, if it takes its promises, uh, we will plan an, another brownout in two weeks that will last at least one full day. And finally, if everything goes as expected, we will plan persisting that, uh, that setting in the future. Is there any question on this one? Okay. Please note that the immediate consequence is that the, there will be soon, later today or tomorrow morning, last, uh, last deadline, a change in the settings XML of our CI Jenkins IO ACP systems. The builds will exclude ACP from being used when trying to reach, um, to download artifact from what uh, any repository uh, which ID is central. That should not have any impact now, but during the brownout, it will be heavily used. 
That means any artifact downloaded from the Maven central and not from our artifactory inside CNG and Kinsayo won't be cached at all. And they will be redownload every time. That might increase a bit some of the builds. We will assess the consequences of that later. The priority is to decrease the outbound bandwidth on artifactory. And then we will think about a way to cache this artifact, either using ACP or another method. No more ACP for central artifactory for now. Any question, clarification, objection? Okay, next step. Oh, just, just a minute. I heard the word noise in my house. Okay, that's the cat who broke something, sorry. I, I had me worried. Uh, next issue, downgrade to HTTP when there is no trailing slash. So our security officer, um, following a security report, communicated to us that when you try to reach uh, Jenkins IO with a suffix slash something, there is a two HTTP redirection. The first one that goes to HTTP, which then redirects itself to HTTPS again. We don't want HTTPS to HTTP downgrade connection. Uh, the setting is in Fastly. I don't know much more, so we need to fix this one. It's not emergency, but that's important enough in terms of security. So we should find a solution for this one. It's not blocking anyone, it's just security uh, reporting. So we have to look on the Fastly setups and most probably change uh, an attribute on the Terraform Fastly project. Any question? Okay. Uh, any volunteer is uh, welcome to check this. Um, another issue during the security release, that one should be easy to, f to fix. Uh, since the migration of the trusted and CI controller from one VM to another, the new VM has a, host, a local host name of controller for both machines which leads to human error and mistakes because you think you are performing an action on one of the machine while in fact you are connected to the other machine. So the goal of that issue is to help the human operator that we are and that security people are to avoid uh, this problem. So at least on the, um, the common prompt, we want to have the full qualified name that will be controller dot trusted dot CI Jenkins IO or private controller CI Jenkins IO. And ideally, if we could add uh, custom colors, at least for the root user, that will help. So that might be a bit of Linux and a bit of Puppet to persist the Linux setup. Uh, that's a quick one, uh, but that will help a lot the security teams. Is there any question or people who want to try this one? I will probably try. Yeah, okay. It's okay for you. Absolutely. Stefan is volunteer. Uh, disallow issue creation in event project type. That's me being late. It's a Jira admin uh, uh, step as far as I can tell. I haven't looked uh, on this one in detail, so no expectation here. I need to take it or any other Jira admin. AWS decrease cost for summer 2023. Uh, that's an epic top level issue that we keep on while we are working. That's our top priority. Uh, Alf, most of this work is done by RV with the update center. The rest is uh, taken by me around the PKG machine migrating to Azure. Uh, we'll discuss about that on Ubuntu 22. 
Another Linux Foundation issue, Mark is taking this, he's exchanging through tickets with the Linux Foundation, so no action required from the team, but we keep it on the milestones. Matomo GitHub repo, no member of the team was able to work on this, so let's delay. Ubuntu 22 upgrade campaign, uh, for that one I've started checking PKG Jenkins IO, which is hosted on the same virtual machine that we want to get rid of uh, as Update Center. Um, most probably we will start with only an Apache service based on the mirror bit charts that Hervé mentioned earlier, which serve static files and that's all. That service PKG origin Jenkins IO uh, has the package indexes which is then proxied by the Fastly CDN. So that service has a low usage, but is really, really important. And so the goal is to move it from AWS to Azure cluster. So then we should be able to not depend on a remote virtual machine for generating packages during the core releases. So work in progress on this one. The most complicated part for me is to find every core release steps that interact with that machine, and there are a lot. Not mentioning that also the plugin updates is also interacting with that machine, sometimes for update center, sometimes for package, sometimes for both. So I, right now I'm trying to assess the different elements and I will report with diagram here. Finally, last one, no work was done on remove IP restriction on bounds or migrate to VPN. I've created, uh, as we will see with the issue to triage, the issue about third CI cleanup and hold network cleanup. We are inside that area. For now, I won't be able to work and I don't think none of us will be able. So I propose that this issue is delayed of at least two weeks. No objection? Okay, I've, I've bored everyone. So now let's have a look at the tr issue to triage. Do we have new important issues? Do you have topics that uh, you want to mention? New issue, new things. Okay, so I'm selecting triage issues. Yeah, we have a lot of triage issue. I will only look at the last one. Um, Artifactory, the one I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting. So what should we do for the Artifactory 401 issues? 